Hello, welcome to Time Master. In this video I'm going to talk about the optional QuickBooks export module. This can be purchased through the modules tab in the upgrades. And when this comes up, it's the QuickBooks export. And we'd like you to go to our website and read about the export before you purchase it, just so you know exactly what it can and can't do. Um, unfortunately, QuickBooks, it only works with QuickBooks for Windows. The Mac version does not support IIF import of time activity records. And also, we don't have a way to export expenses into QuickBooks, so that we found a good way of doing that right now. So, if you're a QuickBooks expert and can come up with some good solutions for uh, expense exports, we'd love to add that in. So far, we've not found a good way to do that. Okay, so the first thing that you'll want to do is go into the setup and go into the new QuickBooks setup screen and the you'll need to set up an employee so if you have multiple people working for you, you'll set up each employee in here set myself up in here um, your items account is your uh, account that the items will go into in QuickBooks so in this case we have a set for sales uh, the item names now the way that items work in QuickBooks is they determine your rates and all that so what you need to do is either determine if you want to use uh, projects or tasks for your items uh, we suggest using tasks because you can create a global task and use it for any customer so that keeps things a little easier and we have something that we call a default item now if you haven't set up an item in uh, a task in one of your entries like say for example we go into here and we've got a task in here we call the standard rate and if you didn't have the task in there if this was blank and you sent this over it's going to default to whatever your default item is in the setup so that was uh, that called Time Master and that we just figured that would be a good way for you to spot easily that you forgot to assign a task to something. Now if we look at the uh, entry in here for our tasks um, what we did is we created one called Standard Rate and when you bring the IIF file into QuickBooks it's going to also pass any clients and tasks that you assign over to that. So we recommend that you create your items uh, in here and assign a rate to it so that way when it comes into QuickBooks it will also have a rate. If you don't specify the rate in the task it's going to bring it over as empty and you'll have to do that in QuickBooks. The other thing too is for the um, employee name in the QuickBooks setup some versions of QuickBooks don't seem to bring over the employee correctly so we'd recommend creating the employee record in QuickBooks before you do the import. Okay so now that we've got all this set up we'll go into our reports menu this is where you'll generate these and you generate the report exactly the same way as you would for just a regular uh, HTML or CSV report so we'll hit generate you can see it picks up a bunch of items for us and we hit the email icon and now what we get is instead of just going directly to email it asks us if we want to send out the HTML CSV email or if we want to send out the QuickBooks IIF file so in this case we're going to hit QuickBooks and you can see that it has our IIF file on there and it looks very similar to the other exports so we'll send that and now after you've sent it um, you can mark the items as reported so be careful because this is the same marking as reported as you use for the HTML and CSV exports so we suggest that if you're going to be using both of those that you only mark them as reported after doing the QuickBooks exports so we could hit yes there I'm just gonna hit no and that's off to our email so we take that and download that on our computer Okay, so now we've emailed the IIF file to ourselves, and I saved on the desktop. We'll just drag it into our virtual PC here. Okay, we're going to launch Quick QuickBooks here. First thing that you're going to want to do is backup your uh, save a copy or backup 
of your QuickBooks file. It's good to make a backup in case something goes really weird, some behavior you weren't expecting or something. It's always a lot easier to restore from a backup than try and correct all the weird entries. So we'd recommend doing a save copy or backup before doing anything else. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do is go into the Employee Center and add the employee. In some version of QuickBooks it seems to work, in others um, in the testing it didn't seem to work, so we just recommend in going ahead and en entering your employees here, and this has to be the exact same name as it appeared on the iPhone. So we can see that we have Adam here now. So that's entered. Um, I don't know anything about this payroll information stuff, so I'm going to leave as is, and uh, you can hopefully ask your accountant that information. Okay, and now that we have our employees set up, we're going to go to File, and then we're going to go to Utilities, Import, and we're going to import IIF files. And we're going to go to the desktop here and get the IIF file. Okay, this is imported. It seems to ask this question, would you like to set up this employee to use time dated during paycheck creation? Again, don't know what that is. Uh, ask your accountant. Um, we hit no, because otherwise it seems to keep asking that over and over again. Okay, so we're going to close our employee record here. And now we can go in and look at the times. So we'll say we'll look at the weekly timesheets here. And then pick our employee here. And if we go back to August where our entries were, you can start to see that uh, now we have our entries. And as you can see, we have our standard rate item here and uh, it will have our, our dollar amounts for those if we create an invoice. You can see here's our default item and uh, that was one entry for this company that we forgot to uh, put in a uh, task. So as you can see it defaults to whatever our default item is. Okay, so we're going to close out of here. Okay, now off to create the invoice. So we'll go into an invoice. I'm going to pick a customer and we'll select all the records here and import those. Now if you notice in the item we have the default item on one of these lines and you'll see that there's no rate associated with that and we do that on purpose so that you can actually see that you didn't have a rate associated with that and you forgot to pick the task in this one entry. So this is our catch-all. So what we're going to do is go in here, we're going to just pick the standard rate and that will fill in our standard rate. Okay, And now we can save it and there's our invoice. Um, note that if your customer has taxes or stuff, you're going to have to add all that in QuickBooks to add the taxes. And uh, that pretty much wraps up the QuickBooks stuff. If you have any questions, give us an email. And again, um, the reason we don't do uh, expenses right now is the only way we've been able to figure out how to put them in is through the enter bills. But enter bills get associated with vendors, not employees. And then if you do end up creating bills, then in order to get rid of the bills, you have to cross post them against your income account and you end up with a zero balance. So that's not a good way to go with that either. If anybody has some experience with how to uh, bring these across in a better fashion, uh, we'd like to hear about it. So that's it for the QuickBooks module. Thanks for watching.